all of your triggers, all of your wounds are going to be shown to you through relationship. Hello my love, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Lorena, I am a self-concept coach and I support women in shifting their self-concept so that you can really embody your highest potential, align with your authentic soul desires and manifest anything that you desire in your life. If you end up liking this video, please do leave a like. It really helps the algorithm. And if you haven't already, leave a subscribe as well so you don't miss out on any future videos I upload every week. And I would love to have you as part of this community. It's really beautiful over here. <laughs> I also invite you to check out the links in the description box below. There's a bunch of free resources there for you. But now let's get into the video, which is all about everyone and everything around you essentially being your mirror, specifically your relationships being your biggest mirror. So we're going to really dive into the connection between your self-concept and your relationships and how your self-concept is really the basis for every relationship, every connection you have in your life and how you can use that to your advantage to really create a reality that you love waking up to every day. So the reason your self-concept is really the basis for all of this is because your relationships are going to end up mirroring the self-concept that you operate from, that you act from, that you think from, that you feel from, that you believe yourself to be, that you show up as, all of that impacts, directly impacts your relationships, your attachments and your connections to other people and even other things. There's this really famous sentence used a lot in the manifestation community, specifically around Neville Goddard, which is everyone as you pushed out. I do have a very old video on this as well. I have not watched it myself in years, so I don't even know if I resonate with everything I said in that <laughs> anymore, but I will still link it somewhere in the description below or in an info card over my head. But essentially this idea of everyone being you pushed out simply means that everything and everyone around you is a reflection of your self-concept and that is not just some woo-woo spiritual talk, how you perceive yourself, who you think you are, obviously directly impacts the thoughts you have and the feelings you have and how you show up, the actions you take, the behaviors, the habits. It directly impacts your identity, the identity you operate from. Depending on what identity you operate from, you're gonna show up differently in all of your connections, in all of your relationships. So it's going to directly impact how other people treat you, perceive you, what you're able to manifest in your life and so on. We also need to remember that we are constantly in relationship to people, things, even ourselves. We are constantly in relationship. We are not in an isolated experience over here. I think sometimes this idea of everyone as you pushed out or even this idea of you creating your reality is almost pushed into this concept of solipsism where people start operating from their ego even more rather than integrating their ego. And it's really essential for that reason that we learn to work with our ego, that we really get intimately familiar with our ego and our shadow and that we really get to know it and that we really learn how to work with it, integrate it, alchemize it in order for us to not attach even the spiritual concepts to our ego and to our identity. And that's what you see happen a lot, that manifestation isn't expansive anymore. It's not a tool for interconnectedness anymore, interconnectedness that already exists, but it turns into this ego trip, this pursuit of controlling everything around you rather than connecting with everything around you and just focusing on your own state of being for everything around you to mirror and reflect what you desire rather than manipulation. But a lot of people get caught up into the view on the self, right? Even what I teach, which is all about the self-concept, you can do this in a very egocentric way where you only think about what you can get out of it 
But the way I teach it and the way I approach it is really that the more you work on yourself and the more you step into your highest embodiment, your highest potential, your most ideal self-concept, it's going to cause a ripple effect. It's not just for you. It's for everyone around you also. So we're not alone over here. We're not in an isolated experience. We're connected to other people, other things around us. And it's that connection, that relationship that is really leading to this beautiful evolution in our consciousness. So why is that? It is because your relationships mirror everything about you. In your relationships, you are going to see how you really feel about yourself. You are really going to see how you really think about the world. You're going to see what beliefs you have about everything in life, about other people, about your reality, about what's possible for you, about yourself. All of your triggers, all of your wounds are going to be shown to you through relationship. If it was just you, you would not get activated by anything, you would not get triggered by anything, you would not learn about yourself, right? That's why we're here, that's why we're in these human physical bodies to learn about ourselves to learn about consciousness, to learn who we really are, to remember who we, who we really are. And we need the connection to others in order to be shown this. I often work with clients who desire either to manifest a relationship or to manifest improvements in their relationship, be that romantic or platonic or sometimes familial. And I always like to say to the people that don't yet have that relationship, that now is when it's easy. Before you manifest that relationship is really when it's easy because that's when you only get to focus on yourself. That's when you only need to look within and you don't get the triggers reflected back to you. It's really when you get into relationship that all of the stuff really comes up and you can't hide from it anymore. It's very easy to hide from things when it's just you. So relationships are therefore such a gift because they force you to heal. They force you to confront every part within you that is actually keeping you from stepping into your highest potential. You're not going to see it just by yourself. And I also work with a lot of people who come to me because they maybe experience the same patterns in their relationships over and over again. And they're tired of it and they're ready to break it. And that's what we then end up doing, right? To break the persistent patterns that repeat over and over again in their relationships. Now, if this is you, for example, if you experience the same patterns over and over again in your relationships, then I have to tell you the hard truth that if that is what you're experiencing, there is a part of you that is fully available for that experience, that is fully available for that pattern. The good news is these patterns can be broken. It's always so beautiful for me to see when a client has been stuck in the same relational pattern for so long and suddenly it shifts because it finally clicked into place because we worked on that together and we really integrated the shadow pieces that were blocking them from manifesting that connection that they truly desired and from breaking that pattern that was previously so persistent. It is possible for you. It's really rewarding when it happens and it's going to be this massive light bulb moment where you can't go back from it really. You cannot go back to your old patterns once you've broken them. And it's such a gift as well. If you experience these patterns still, if you experience repetitive patterns, you experience the same triggers over and over again, it can easily feel like you're being punished and like it's unfair, but it's just that that part of you hasn't been integrated yet, that you haven't worked through it yet, that you haven't maybe found the root of it yet. And that's what you still need help with. But it is a gift because it's all teaching you a message and it's on you to decide whether you decide to continue with that pattern or whether you take the steps to break it because your shadows are going to be triggered in relationship also. They're going to be shown to you in relationship too. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a big advocate for shadow work and the way I teach it is quite unique. I teach a very specific framework in my coaching program, but it's so key for transforming your relationships also. And I do have a video, which I'm going to link above my head, <laughs> about 
how your shadow essentially sabotages you and blocks you from manifesting all of the things that you truly desire. What I also want to explore in this video is that often when we talk about relationships are your biggest mirrors, they are your biggest teachers, they are your biggest triggers, we think about romantic relationships. That tends to be what the brain goes to, that tends to be what's most talked about. But as I said before, everything in your life is about relationships. So it's not just romantic, it can apply and it definitely does apply in a big way, I'm gonna get to that, to romantic relationships, but it also applies to any other type of relationship you have in your life. The reason romantic relationships are often emphasized is because they tend to be your biggest mirror for most people, not for everyone, but for most people, for the kind of people who prioritize romantic relationships, for whom that's a really important desire, or that's a really important connection, or it's the person closest to you or the person you're most attached to, that will be your biggest mirror because of the intensity of the attachment. So the relationship in your life that will be your biggest mirror will be the relationship you have the most attachment to and the most emotional intimacy to. And working with and through attachments and releasing attachments that aren't needed is also a really, really key part of the work I do with my clients because if you have an intense attachment, it's going to be really hard for you to release resistance and to be open to letting into your reality what you desire. It's going to be hard to surrender when you have a lot of attachment. And these attachments didn't just develop yesterday either, right? They might show up in the context of a specific person or a specific thing recently but the way you attach to things or people that has been present for a while so it often needs some deeper work but whilst romantic relationships are often the biggest mirror it was definitely and still is for me the biggest mirror we cannot forget that our attachments show up in all kinds of relationships and how we attach in one area is usually how we attach in the other area also. So for example, a pattern that I used to have was really about extreme codependency, <laughs> really unhealthy. And I used to be very anxiously attached. And healing that codependency was a big part in my own self-concept shifts that then enabled me to call in like completely different relationships. But I had to realize whilst I initially thought that codependency only showed up in romantic connections, it actually showed up in every connection, in every relationship, in every area of my life. And what I also want to make clear here is that relationships are not just relationships to people. You can also have repetitive patterns that show up in relationships to things. That could be, for example, the relationship that you have to your desires as a whole, which often also, again, shows up in your attachment, right? And it's easy to say, oh, just release the attachment. It's not as simple as that. I do have some videos on attachment as well, so I'll link them in the description also because it's so important to shift from attachment to just pure desire. And it's not easy to do. If you struggle with it, if you find it hard to release attachment, you are not alone, definitely not. It's difficult, especially when you don't have the support, but it is so possible. It doesn't just happen through you deciding to release attachment. It does require some deeper work, but it is so possible for you. It's so rewarding and it's going to open you up to receive everything you want. It really will. Another relationship that can be a good mirror for you is your relationship to money. You know, it's not just people. Money is such a good teacher also. Your relationship to money will show you so much about yourself. And there's a big connection between money and love anyway, which I can do a whole other video on because it's a big topic. So let me know if you're interested in that. But basically, if you have certain patterns in relationships, you will have the exact same patterns with money. It might manifest in slightly different ways. You might not be aware of it, but I have yet to meet a client who has not had the same attachments or the same patterns that they had in relationship 
with money. It's always the same. Sometimes it manifests different externally, but internally it's always the freaking same pattern. And the reason why that's important is because your self-concept is, as I said, the root of everything. So if you shift that in one area of, of your life, it's going to impact the rest. I have a free money mindset masterclass that I will link below so you can check that out. And in that masterclass, it was all about money, right? And the energy of money and the relationship to money and how to heal your money story and step into a state of abundance. And yet I had a couple of people reach out to me afterwards that their relationship to a partner or a potential partner improved afterwards, after that masterclass. And I've also experienced the opposite. I have worked with clients in my coaching program where we really honed in on working on manifesting a relationship. And not only did they create that relationship, they saw huge improvements in their mindset around money in their abundance consciousness and what tangibly came in for them, the money, the amount of money they received and they were able to hold. But we didn't even work on money. And it's because your self-concept is sort of the root of all of it. It's the center and everything else just blooms from it. And the other relationship that we also can't neglect that is the most subtle teacher, but a very important teacher is your relationship to yourself. How you treat yourself is how you also allow others to treat you. So your relationship to yourself directly impacts the relationships that you have to others in your life. There's basically two sides to self-concept work. And the first part of what I work through with my clients is always about just the self. But then there is also a huge part that's about the connection to others and the relationship to others and how to apply everything you've integrated on your own in connection to others. So there's a lot of emphasis on boundary work, for example, because as I said before, you can do all the work you want on yourself and with yourself and by yourself, but you can only really put it to the test when you're in connection to other people. So I feel like every video I come back to the same thing, which is your self-concept is so key because the more you step into your most aligned, authentic and empowered self, the more you will experience relationships with people, things, money that reflect that relationship that you have with yourself and that perception that you have of yourself, the beliefs you have of yourself, the embodiment you hold. And if your relationship with yourself is not healthy, then you will struggle more to have a healthy relationship with other people also. So I promise you transforming your self-concept will shift every area of your life. It will shift every relationship that you had in the past and even now in the present and definitely in the future. So it will shift relationships in retrospect also, which is really amazing and such a great experience when that happens for you. And when you create this deep transformation within yourself, your life will transform because you are so in alignment with who you are supposed to be. Changing your self-concept will instantly improve your relationships. And we all want that, don't we? <laughs> I would love to know from you. Let me know in the comments below what relationship you are currently desiring to shift in your life. Is it a relationship to somebody specific, someone around you? Is it a relationship to something you desire, to an experience, to a thing, to money? Let me know and I will see you in next week's video. Thank you so much for being here with me.